airborne toxic event sometime around midnight. I'm Matt. Mikel Jolette, lead singer of that band, songwriter as well, is on the phone. Uh, why don't you tell us about that tune? The, the funny thing about that song is that it, it actually happened. Uh, some people, it, people come up and ask uh, occasionally, like, so, so that song, Sometime Around Midnight, what's, what's that about? And I always find that really odd. Because I'm like, well, if you start with the opening line <laughs> <laughs> and you go through to the end of the song, it's pretty much all it's about. It's not really like some sort of deep metaphor for modern man's existential struggle with whatever the hell. <laughs> you know, it's literally just about seeing your ex-girlfriend in a bar and going home and being really upset about it while drinking yourself silly. That's, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. And we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> so how are you, man? Pretty well. All right, man. How you been? I uh, I've been good. I've been good. It's uh, we got we got a huge dump of snow this morning, so I've been better. But uh, <laughs> winter's starting. Where where are you, LA? I'm in LA. We got we got no snow here. Is it like you get a ton of snow and then they cancel they cancel school that day and everything? <laughs> yeah, it happens from time to time. We don't get much of that in LA. Like it, it, the mountains just behind LA, that you know, you look at like snow packed you know, peaks and stuff in the winter. Right. Here's a good title for you, Snow-Packed Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so are you guys working on a record? I heard you're working on a disc now. Yeah, that's right. So we're, we're, we're finishing up our, our second record. We've been in the studio uh, for quite a while. How's it sounding? Are, are you pleased? Like, what, what, uh, give, me, give me some details. It's, it's so much to think about. It, it's <laughs> taken about a year uh, to make, um, and we wrote uh, about 50 songs. Wow. So I heard you were originally writing a book on the first record and, and turned it to prose. Is that the same process for this time? No, no. So, I mean, I was I, essentially I was working on a novel before, and um, halfway through the novel, uh, I just started writing songs um, in my room to, uh, I guess it's sort of a pro- procrastination thing at first, and then it eventually became something, you know, um, that I did um, sort of took, started to take more seriously because it started taking over, like, all of my time. But this one, like, you know, we came back, we toured for two years, and we played, you know, like 350 shows around the world, and I came home and suddenly was like, okay, you're home, and I uh, had this uh, second record looming, and so I just kind of locked myself in a room and, and wrote a ton of songs, you know, it's, um, the records, it's a different kind of record, I think, you know, it's, the first record was a lot of, like, sad songs about girls and stuff, because mm-hmm. uh, I was going through this breakup, this pretty horrific breakup at the time and then now it's like you know there's a, there's definitely some different themes you know my family's kind of gone through some stuff in the last couple of years we lost some family members and a lot of time spent um thinking about those issues and thinking about you know what it means you know to when people you care about you know or you're really close to you know when you lose them i think that that has like this transformative effect hmm. on your life and so um it ended up being kind of the main theme uh, of the record. Do you ever plan on finishing that book, or did it all come out in, in, in songs? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I keep thinking that I'm going to have time to finish it. I keep thinking, oh, yeah, man, I'll be home for, you know, time long enough. And then we're just, like, the, the touring schedule has just been so aggressive. I mean, we're in, you know, five different time zones in a week. Right. And, you know, playing and sleeping on a bus and doing, you know, interviews and, um, you know, doing meet and greets with fans. And then, you know, you go to dinner, and then you do sound check, then you play your show. Then afterwards, everybody wants to go out, and then you go out and you come home, and it's like 2 a.m., and you're on the bus, <laughs> and you're on your way to the next city. The other interesting thing I find about the whole the whole book process is, were you playing guitar before, or did you pick it up after realizing these were songs you were writing? Oh, um, well, I, I, I knew how to play guitar. I just okay. hadn't touched it in a long time. I was like one of those. I would like write songs for my girlfriend, you know, and like in high school and stuff. So like, I knew how to play guitar for that purpose. Right. Uh, but I hadn't touched it. I, you know, I didn't want to be a musician. I just wanted to write. All my heroes... Uh, my heroes were writers, you know, people like Kurt Vonnegut and F. Scott Fitzgerald and Chekhov. And, I mean, these are the people that I, like, really, really looked up to and felt that, you know, in a culture, the, the really significant people are the writers. They're the canny ones. They're the smart ones. They're the ones that really get it. Mm-hmm. And I always, always wanted to, to be one myself. Um, and then, uh, like I said, I was, I was down that road a bit, you know, I'd, uh, and uh, just uh, <laughs> then music just kind of took over, and it took me a long time to kind of get established as a writer to get all the all the things that you know to that, that add up to what you call a literary you know career like whatever like um, I had a I had columns and I had you know published uh, short stories and McSweeney's and I had 
an agent, like a literary agent, mm-hmm. and like the whole nine. And like I got into Yaddo, all the things that are like, you know, this is a, this is what you do when you're trying to be right. And it took forever. And then in the middle of that, I, I suddenly was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a band. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody thought I was crazy. My, my mom and dad, my my like my friends, they were like, what? You're going to do what? You just spent five years like trying to like establish yourself as a writer and it's finally going well and you're going to, you're going to do what? They, it was like complete, like, they'd have been less surprised if I was like, you know, guys, I, I, I'm going to join the circus. Right. I just decided that knife throwing, that's like, that's really where my uh, my skills lies in, is in knife throwing. There's another idea for a song, a knife-wielding writer. A knife-wielding writer on a mountain, on a snow-capped mountain. On a snow-capped mountain, there you go. That's actually the name of the next record. That's, oh. That's good. I, I don't think we're supposed to say that, but yeah, a knife-wielding writer on a snow-capped mountain is actually... It's a metaphor for for death and life. (laughs) There you go. There's a scoop right here. We do something on the show called Five Questions. Five quick questions, one word answers. Do it. One word answers? One word answers. Okay. Fish. (laughs) Trombone. Sourdough bread. That's a few words. That's a Yeah, fair Um, enough. Um, Existentialism and yes. Can we see if those line up, though? Can we just see if, like, when you ask, maybe they'll line up? And yeah, they might. I don't know about the sourdough bread. Well, maybe, actually. It's time to put another celebrity on the hot seat. Here's Matt Shifter with five questions. On 95.7 The Sound. Road or studio? Road. Lennon or McCartney? Lennon. Most important thing in a song, lyrics, melody, or rhythm? Ooh, uh, lyrics. Song you've written you're most proud of. Doesn't need to be one word. <laughs> like a song with one word that you've written. <laughs> yeah. <most proud> <laughs> Uh, that I'm most proud of. Um, oh, that's tough. I don't know. They're, it's hard to choose one. They're like they're like children, you know. Fair enough. One word. Airborne toxic event. <laughs> uh, one word. One um, word. Uh, uh, um, I can't think of one. Sourdough bread. Sourdough. Oh, it does line up. Then there you go. That was five questions on ninety-five-seven. The sound. Listen weeknights at 5:30.